Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Neha and today I am talking about my reads of Feb 2022. Before we get started about how my reading has been and the books that I've finished in this month, I wanted to kind of introduce a different angle to just these wrap up videos. And I was thinking about, uh, you know, issues that I face <laughs> while filming these videos. So usually what happens at the end of the year is that I kind of forget about the books that I read at the beginning of the year and uh, I forget what what I felt when I read them. So um, my ch intention with this entire channel is to kind of document my reading journey anyway. So uh, I wanted to kind of introduce that where when I talk about a wrap up, a monthly wrap up, I would choose the best of the month and the not so best of the month. So then, you know, every month there's a best and a least favorite book. And then at the end of the year, I can just look at all of these, are uh, these 12 best and not so best books and uh, just rank them or, you know, decide the best of the best and the least favorite of the, of the entire lot. So yeah, I just thought it will be fun to include that in the wrap-up video because otherwise the wrap-up video is also usually a little monotonous so yeah that's what i'm gonna do so starting a month late but uh, before we move on to the february books let me quickly tell you about my best and my least favorite of my january reads my best january read will have to be the burning god by rf kuang uh, this is book three in the poppy war trilogy and i'm so surprised that my best book of a particular month is actually like a fantasy pick uh, it's not exactly fantasy it's fantasy magic etc so very very proud of myself for how diverse <laughs> uh, how diverse this particular pick is uh, if you want to see why this was my best read for the month i will link up my january wrap up video up above do check it out and my least favorite book will probably will have to be the lincoln highway by amor tolls uh, once again read check out that video to see why i was just a little let down with this book so it's not the worst book that's why i don't want to call it like the worst read of the month because it's it's not a bad book it's not the worst book ever it's just that in that particular month it was you know my least favorite so yeah those are my two picks for january and moving on to february reads so in terms of just the overall wrap up of how February has been, uh, once again, I managed to finish only four month, four books in this month. Uh, life has been crazy. I am not doing so well mentally, physically, etc. So reading has been kind of on a backpack burner. Um, so in terms of quantity, I am not doing so great <laughs> for my reading plans. But in terms of quality, I'm really happy with the books that I ended up reading because there's a lot to take away from them and a lot to love. So that remains the same from January. Even in Jan, I finished four books and now again, I finished four books. Uh, in terms of diversity of the genres, I would say it's pretty diverse. There is a non-fiction book, uh, my first non-fiction read for the year. Very excited about that. I also have a Booker nominated booktube bookstagram favorite, which I finally got to. There's an Indian classic that again, I'm so happy that I finished after wanting to read it for so long and like one lit fig book. So yeah, let me take you through what I've read. And then at the end, I will tell you about my best read and my least favorite read. So keep on watching if you want to find out why. So let's go, let's start. The first book that I finished in the month is A Fine Balance by Rohintan Mistri. This is an Indian classic. It is in a lot of people's list of favorite Indian fiction. And I'm glad that I finally got to it. Uh, this is set during the emergency in India in the 1970s. So the emergency is kind of this period in India's history with uh, which has so much historical, political, national turmoil and uh, it, it's kind of like a marital law was imposed by the prime minister indira gandhi the story is that there are four unlikely people brought together by circumstances uh, one of them is a parsi widow uh, who is just looking to make money and live independently without uh, coming under the influence of an overprotective brother so she starts like this illegal uh, tailoring shop in her house and she hires the two Dalit tailors who are uncle and nephew uh, to come work for her in that house. Also in that house is a paying guest, a young man from the mountains who is facing bullying in her in his college. So he ends up boarding with her. Uh, so that's another source of income for her. So all four of these characters are brought together by their circumstances and also because of the stature of them in the society, they have different 
demons that they kind of have to face with for example the dalit tailors come from the rural parts of india and they have escaped a lot and they their entire family ha had to go through a lot for them to reach that stage and they are also just you know looking for livelihood and when they reach the city uh, because of the uh, times uh, where uh, fundamental rights and civil rights were at an all time low and just the things that they had to go through are just so Thajending. So yeah, I just I loved the book because of that. That in spite of these tragedies, in spite of these horrible things which are happening to them and around them, they are they are just so enduring. These characters that you just have to fall in love with them and uh, you know laugh along with them. You know even in despite of their differences, despite about them bringing family stereotypes, anything. So yeah, I absolutely absolutely loved this book. uh it's a true classic for the ages i think and it's just so eye opening in terms of the regime and what happened in the, in those few years of india so yeah this was a five star read for me and i will recommend this book if anybody is looking for a indian fiction book to read to know more about our country so moving on to my second read again an indian book but a non fiction this time this is coming out as dalit by yashika dat this is a memoir and also kind of like a educational reference book uh i don't know i don't know how to classify it genre wise but you would probably get it as i tell you what the book is about so yashika dat is somebody who her and her family have been trying to pass off as upper caste in india uh, throughout their lives when yashika dat is a journalist and she is in new york and one day she comes across uh, the death of rohit vemula who is a dalit student activist in hyderabad university who uh, takes his life by suicide and uh, yeah that kind of ignites this fire in her and she decides to take back her identity and she comes out as dalit literally like she outs herself on social media and she also starts this tumblr page i think where uh, other dalits can you know post their experiences anonymously um so all these experiences uh, lead her to writing this memoir about her entire life and also just the history of dalit lives and history and challenges and uh, just their experiences in india in the india of today and in the india of the past i am a little wary about speaking what this book meant to me on social media because i come from a place of privilege i was very ignorant to a lot of things that this book faced me with um of course i know about the history of the caste system uh i know just what people go through because they are ta tagged as lower caste and uh, yeah you know the few experiences of theirs that make it to national media but i was just so ignorant to a lot of things so i just was learning so much in this book as you can see i've annotated my way through it there is this one chapter in this book towards the end when you're actually quite shaken through the entire reading experience but there's this one chapter which talks about dalit rights and feminism um i think last year no in 2020 there was this whole conversation during the black lives movement right how black lives movement in feminism is kind of like nobody speaks about it when whenever people talk about feminism it's always from the white women's gaze it's not really from the minorities gaze and to kind of like take that concept to the feminist issues in india it's also the same because the feminist issues in india of today is also for the privileged people right we talk about equality in pay in the corporate world we talk about uh, discrimination in colleges we talk about uh, public safety road safety but it's again always from the view of upper caste privileged women and there are so many issues that dalit women face uh, in the hinterlands in the rural areas that just don't get the same attention i was some of the facts of this book are left me shaken to the core like how a dalit woman is not viewed as herself she is viewed as the property of the upper caste man first and then her husband and how you know a lot of crimes a lot of assault abuse 
on dalit women goes unreported because nobody believes them or nobody you know fights for them and uh, just that entire chapter is just it it really did leave me shaken how do i put this without sounding pretentious i just i don't know it was just an education it was a revelation it is outstanding it is a powerful book and everybody should just shut up and read it and just give dalits the place and the space to talk about their own experiences and to stand in solidarity with them that's all that's that's all i would want to say i mean i'm almost in tears as i'm talking about this so you can guess how many stars i've given this book so yeah please 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 read this this was amazing the next book that i finished taking a little bit of a back seat from the tough reads that i've had uh, is luster by raven leilani this is a book that i've seen quite a bit quite a bit on booktube and bookstagram i think uh so this is the story of ed who's a 20 something black woman now ed in her own words is just trying to survive she is just trying to you know do her job she ends up sleeping with all the wrong white men in life and she ends up in the wrong circumstances almost all the time then she starts dating eric who is a middle aged white man a uh, married white man with a adopted black teenage daughter and they start this relationship now eric things that he now eric tells her that he is in an open marriage and they have he and his wife have an understanding that he can you know pursue other avenues as he sees fit and ed falls for him and starts to have feelings for him and also she starts to get involved with his family in a much deeper way than she ever expected so she has this relationship with this man but she also has a relationship with his wife and she also has a relationship with his black daughter so she is now entangled in this family so to speak and uh, yeah that's the story i don't want to ruin it uh, for you so i'm like measuring my words and speaking but uh, this is this was a tough read i would say i i it was funny it was witty uh in parts like it was brutal uh, just ed talking about you know uh, how a black woman lives in today's world it is brutal it is kind of like you know straight up in your face um and i enjoyed it in parts it's just i don't think this book is for me <laughs> because it was a little too complicated for me i think it was a little too gray and i am not that much of a gray person <laughs> i'm more of a black and white kind of a person so i didn't i didn't really enjoy this as much as i hoped or expected to be again i don't think this book is meant for me there's nothing wrong with this book it's a great book it is written really really cleverly like i could see where the author wants you to enjoy it it's just not for me it did leave me a little uncomfortable it did leave me a little like like this <laughs> but i just i don't know i didn't enjoy it as much as i thought it would be i don't i don't think that was a coherent review but that it is what it is <laughs> i didn't i didn't get this book honestly and i rated it i think 3 and a half stars out of 5 because i get it i get it it's a great it's a very cleverly written book just not for me and then the final book is booktube bookstagram favorite <laughs> a tale for the time being by ruth ozeki i had so many expectations from this book first of all shortlisted for the booker prize second of beloved by madeline miller third thirdly beloved by so many booktubers um so i had so many many high expectations for this book and when it started off it absolutely ticked every single box uh but i should tell you the plot of the story before i start the review of the story that's how this works so let's go <laughs> so uh, ruth is the protagonist now she is living in kind of like a dis- not exactly deserted it she 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 lives in the british columbian islands and it's kind of like a desolate nature is taking over kind of 
an island now uh, one day on the beach uh, this hello kitty lunch box washes up on shore and when she opens it there is a book inside which is kind of like a journal diary uh, of a japanese school girl she discovers so she starts reading that book and as we read it along with her we discover what happened to the japanese school girl her name is now and uh, she talks about her life and also she wants to talk about her uh, buddhist grandmother her uh, buddhist nun grandmother so she also wants to talk she wants to like kind of like document her grandmother's life for posterity's sake because her grandmother is i think 105 at this point so now recognizes that she might not be around for long and that more people should know about her grandmother so that's what she does now starts to expand on the concept of for the time being at least what she's learned from her grandmother so it's a very buddhist concept about how time is fleeting human beings are fleeting human experiences are fleeting everything is for the time being you know uh, nothing is permanent so to speak um so the book starts off from there and we just discover now's life um so she is uh, somebody who was born in the united states uh, her father was uh, you know working for a startup during the tech bubble and when it burst they lost everything in the crash and they had to move back to japan so now because she is an, kind of like an american she finds it very difficult to fit it in, fit into J- japan culture and japan schools so she gets bullied like relentlessly and to a scale that is very difficult to read about and uh, she is you know her father is also facing uh, mental health issues and he always and he is he has suicidal tendency and he tries to kill himself a couple of times throughout the book so again really tough things to read about but just the way now narrates her story i found that really really intriguing and interesting and when she ties it in together with you know lessons that she learned from her grandmother lessons that she learned from the buddhist uh culture it was just very interesting to me till the first half and then uh, ruth's story starts to take over and then we go into these realms of magical realism and quantum mechanics and uh eco terrorism and just there's just too many like random topics inserted into this book which just took away from the entire reading experience for me i wish that it would have stuck to the same thing that it was trying to do in the first half of the book uh i wish that ruth didn't get as involved in this book as she does because it just ruined the entire story for me so by the time i finished reading it i was very let down because in the first half of the book i thought that this book would be another five star read just because also uh the entire concept of for the time being really excited me and i wish that there was more spoken about it but there really was not there's some random crow which is introduced there's quantum mechanics there is this subplot of a kamikaze pilot and just it lost me it really really did and i'm so disappointed with this book i ended up rating it two and a half stars out of five but if it would have just continued in the same way that as the first half of the book it would have been at least a four star read in my mind but it didn't so i'm sorry but <laughs> yeah I- best book for the month without a question i have gushed about this book so much it has to be coming out as dalit by yashika dat uh i just loved this book and it was an eye opener it was a challenging book to read it was just so informative and i just felt ignorant while reading it and it was a revelation and i think that's what non fiction should be right like you're reading them to gain something out of it and again a whole whole lot out of this book and i absolutely absolutely loved this book so this is this goes straight up to the top for february and it is my best read my least favorite read again since i have just just a few seconds ago spent some time bashing this book it is a tale for the time being by ruth ozeki such a disappointment i so wish it was it continued what it was doing in the first half but it really didn't this is my problem with japanese novels like you know like in the way same way as murakami you perfectly good normal practical plot with elements of things that you want to learn about and things of the culture that you want to learn about completely ruined when you take this turn into magical realism and this one had quantum physics and mechanics into it so that just like flew over my head as well but why why do they have to do that why can't you just stick to what you were doing wonderfully well in the first half so yeah unfortunately this is my 
least favorite book for February. So yeah, those were all the books that I read in Feb 2022. Like I said, it's been a great reading month in terms of quality. Hoping to keep that up in March as well. And I will see you and hope you like this video. If you're still around, please like, share, comment, subscribe, all of that jazz. Thank you so much if you're still here and I will see you next time. Bye.